Hello Internet, welcome back. So, we're continuing right off where we left off last time with our flat shader. I'm actually recording these right back to back, so hopefully we can just pick things right up again. What we just finished doing is we just finished creating this cool little flat circle that's got perfect precision. I think what we're going to do next is we're going to run some, probably just a sine wave through this. And then we can work with that to make some fun shapes. So I'm going to create another new shader. Call it something something smart. Not entirely sure what it's going to be called yet, but it's going to be it's going to be clever. Flat sign shader. Yeah, I had higher hopes than that, but oh well. We're just going to copy our circle shader and paste it here. Then we can fix some of the formatting because it always gets gross. All we need to do now is we've got our X and we've got our Y. How do we want to do this? We've got... Well, one of these isn't going to matter. So, sine is a function of R 0 0.5 plus the sine of x. Right, so we've got our sine times 0 0.5 times or plus 0 0.5. So the idea here, don't need that f there, the idea here is we're going to have our center be in the middle and then we'll multiply our sine. It's going to give us a wave between negative 1 and 1. If we have that, then we get 1 when we add these two together. And then we should just be able to plug that into here and it should come up with something intelligent. Uh, it's probably not going to like that we have two of the same things, so... Ooh, clicking all the wrong things. Sine wave. So, we can change this to now be our sine. and change everything else. So it kind of looks like this. Since we plugged in our x value, uh, it looks like I had those backwards in the last one. So since we're plugging in x, I would expect it to go like this. It's not doing that. And it actually kind of looks like it's a flat line. I'm guessing what's happening here is I just need to amp this up a bunch. So if I multiply that by 10, and we'll plug in the Y. I'm, I'll fix those later. Oh. Hold on. What are you doing now? I mean, that's cool and all, but it's not what I wanted. Okay, this may be... I was expecting this to be super short, super easy. And I screwed up because this is wrong. Okay. Well, first things first, undo what you did the first time. We need to do, we had our tiling and our offset set. That's bad. So we undo those, get everything back to normal, and then wonder what the heck is going on. I'm just gonna plug in a few values, see what actually is happening. Try to see if I can figure it out. So that just, increase the scale significantly. Okay, so we take the sine of our y value. And multiply it by some number. We should get, well, let's you do the classic pi. Okay, that kind of makes sense, but why? So I'm expecting it to increase or decrease or something, but it's not. Like as it goes across there, the, the X or the Y, both of those should be changing. So it should be increasing or decreasing or do it should, it should have some shape to it. 
but all it's doing now is repeating. This was a terrible idea. Why did I do this? Okay, so don't plug in giant numbers. All it seems to be doing is repeating it. This seemed like such an easy idea. So let, let's let's walk through this and figure out what's actually happening here. So our y value is what we're plugging in. That's going to be taken directly from our uv coordinates. So that should be between uh, negative 1 and 1. And then we plug that into a sine function. I wonder if it's expecting like degrees? No, that doesn't make sense because that just made it loop a bunch. So that's going to return some value and it's going to do a cutoff of that. Okay. Well, this is officially weird. I'm going to do a sanity check here. So this is 0 0.5. So that's halfway in between. Y is going to be between negative 1 and 1. So if we multiply that by half, then we should get a line. Okay, what did I do wrong? I'm clear, some, something's going on. I'm doing something horrible and it's not liking it. Huh. So, why? Let's plug in X quick. Even our cutoffs aren't working. This is probably something the obvious. I'm guessing some of you already know what's wrong, but I don't. So, we've got our, our circle. Oh. I know what's wrong. See this offset? I set it all to 1. There it is. It, was, it wasn't supposed to be 1. The offset is supposed to be 0. And the tiling is supposed to be 1. My bad. Let's go back to our sine wave. See what that actually... Okay. Back to where we started. That's good. Let's see how how correct I was. Still wrong. Okay. And I actually don't need to tweak those values. I can actually tweak these values. And that's interesting. Wrong, but interesting. So increasing this is just increasing the scaling. So it's like we're plugging in the wrong value. What I thought was going to happen was I thought we were going to plug in this sign, this wave function, and then we we're going to plot underneath it. But that doesn't appear to be what's happening. It appears whatever's happening is bad. <laughs> so actually, I'm going to do this do this a different way. First, I'm going to uh, comment those out. And then I'm going to set the albedo to the red is going to be equal to x plus x times 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So between 0 and 1 again, same conversion we've been doing this entire time. And we'll set the green equal to the y's value. And we'll set the blue equal to 0. So how this should work is red x should go from like dark to light. Green should go from dark to light for x and y respectively. And that way we should be able to detect what's what. And so if I reset these, we get this thing. So in this corner, we've got black where it's neither, so that's zero, zero. 
up here we have a like yellow green ish which is our combination of both red and green so that's one one we've got our x equal to our red value and then up top we have in the top left we have our y value with no red so no x so it is working which is good i guess just isn't working the way i anticipated actually i think we can use this we can go this will make our green zero as well and we'll plug this into our sign sign times 3.14 oh oh i know why okay so what's happening here the reason <laughs> I should have seen this happening, but the reason this is happening, I can reduce the tiling of the Y there, but the reason this is happening is because, well, we're graphing our sine wave, which is going to be like starting right, at, right around half, fading out, fading back in, fading back in, and so forth. And so we need to adjust our formulas. That's, that's what's wrong. So, thanks to that, we can now improve this guy somehow. I'm not entirely sure how, but we can. So we've got this sine function that goes in and out, and so that'll end up drawing stripes, but we don't want it to draw stripes. We want it to... do something else <laughs> that was not helpful we want to subtract it from our y value our x value so this will be our x and then if we subtract that from our y so 0 0.5 times our y value plus 0 0.5 So I think this should get us a curve. This should get us a broken ah, semicolon. Always forget the semicolon. It works. So how, how this is working is we had a function that was just doing zero to whatever, but it was only a one dimensional function. That's why, that's why this was breaking. So we needed to make it two dimensional. And so to do that, we in introduced a Y component. And so this Y is what's giving us this. Because we have this Y here, that's a f be using that uh, gradient in and out wave. Now we can use this guy. So I want to play with this. So we can increase this. We've got our sign. Can increase it like that. And this should assuming my pi is relatively close it should perfectly tile and it appears to be pretty dang close you can see so if i zoom way in oh if i zoom way in you'll notice there's this vertical line and the reason that's happening is because my pi is only 3.14 so if I extend this to 3.14159265535, I think that's still pi. <laughs> you see it goes away and we get a more exact uh, estimate. But this, we've now got a sine wave that we can just extend like that. But we don't need to do this. We can actually, I can take this scale and make it, we'll say 100. And so what I can do is also change this tiling to be 100. And now we've got a sine wave that repeats 100 times. So that's how we can actually plug in functions to our shader.
Right now I'm just using a sine wave, but we can plug in anything. Just as an example, let's plug in a tangent. You get the classic tangent shape, the swoosh, like the sideways S of a tangent. It, I mean, this is only a very small segment of a tangent. It, it would keep going in both directions, but we're only, we're only seeing that negative one to one graph. But we can, we can expand that if we want. We just have to tweak some of these values. So yeah, I hope that's, I hope this is interesting. I, I, I thought it was interesting, kind of screwed up on the way, but that's kind of the point. So we've now got sine waves. If you guys want to mess around with this, the easiest thing to do, if you want to just poke at this, let's make this support cosines, which I'm not going to do here, but if anybody wants to do that, it should be one line of code. Shouldn't have to do much. So if you want to just poke at a shader, go for it. Uh, all this code is on GitHub, so you guys can check it out. It's got all of these shaders, the scene, the entire Unity project. Just download it from GitHub, open it in Unity, and you're ready to go. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, uh, leave a comment, punch the like button. That's Jack Septiguy. That's not me. Anyway, yeah, hope you like it. If you do, let me know. Thanks, Internet. See you in the next one.